If you are waiting to be punished, Jesus was already punished. Your sin was already condemned in his body. Your sickness was nailed to that cross. Your poverty was nailed to that cross. Your fear was nailed to that cross. Your defeat was turned into victory on that cross. Your mistakes were paid for on that cross. And today, you have the blood right to a victory in every area of your life because Jesus Christ of Nazareth was your substitute. Hallelujah. Welcome to Get Understanding with Ramson and Estrella Mumba. Tonight we're going to start a series uh, adding on top of what we've been studying concerning the anointing. We began several months ago really because at the beginning of this year, every year, for those of you that may be with us for the first time or watching on the internet or whichever medium you are using, at the beginning of every year, the Lord gives us a word concerning what he is going to do in that year. And this year, he said this would be the year where he would appoint another seat for us. The year of unlimited possibility. Come on, somebody. And in order for us to do those things, we were to execute several things. And the fifth one, which is to trust the anointing. And as we began to look at this, we noticed that the average Christian today don't even know much about the anointing, let alone be able to trust the anointing. So we began to study the anointing and we spent a considerable time not only going through the canon of scripture to establish that actually even the early church, the apostles in the first century, they preached about the anointing. And Jesus preached about the anointing so much so that even Cornelius, a Gentile, had heard about it, that in his hour of need, he knew who to send for. So then we began to say, for many people, the anointing, because of the way we have taught it in the church, has almost become mystical, mysterious, to the point where instead of recognizing that there are mysteries of the anointing, we talk about the anointing as if it is something nebulous, something abstract that cannot be grasped or quantified or understood or even released at will. So we painstakingly began to look at how the anointing manifests. How do I know the anointing is on me? How do I know the power of God is showing up? How do I administrate that? And the last section that we did, we dealt with the seven facets of the anointing recognizing from the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 through where 3 that that being a messianic prophecy the prophet said that the spirit of the lord would rest upon Jesus or you know him as the messiah and it would be the spirit of what wisdom it would be the spirit of what understanding the spirit of what counsel the spirit of what might the spirit of what knowledge and what the fear of the lord or what Worship and then what? Discern. So the seven facets, you're doing good, I'm impressed. The seven facets of the anointing are wisdom, understanding, might, knowledge. I've missed out one counsel, which is number, th number four. And then knowledge, and then there would be what? The fear of the Lord or worship. And number seven, what? Discernment. So when the anointing is in manifestation, you expect to have wisdom. Hallelujah. When the anointing is in manifestation, all these other seven facets would go into operation. Now, what I want to do today is I want to go to the book of uh, Luke chapter 5. In fact, uh, Luke chapter 5, then I will take a detour to establish some things. Luke chapter 5 and verse 17. We touched on this uh, atmosphere for the supernatural. But I want to establish some things that bring us to the point of interest where we can get involved in this. Now it came to pass on a certain day that as he was teaching, talking about Jesus, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by. They had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. Now please notice this last part. And the power of God was what? Present, Present to what? 
heal them. Okay, so now, look at this. Jesus is teaching, and we established in this teaching as well, that he, he, he basically set the standard of the things that must be involved in real Bible ministry. It must be a preaching, teaching, and what? Healing or demonstration. That is how God set up the church. Amen. But notice he's teaching and everybody is listening and they are there. But not only was he the one teaching and present and the crowds were present, but there always was something else present. And Dr. Luke said, it was the power of God which was present to what? Heal them. Now, please notice this. The power of God was present, but not everybody got healed until something happened. We're going to do this in a way that absolutely makes you think about, am I the kind of person that will be in the vicinity of the power of God but never make any withdrawals? In other words, I'm here to submit to you that God has established a bank account for you, got you an ATM card, given you the PIN number, but the average Christian don't know how to make withdrawals even though the money is in the account. And so here is what we're going to start studying. We're going to start talking about the eight points of access to the anointing. The eight points of access to the anointing. If the power of God is present to heal, how do I access that? How do I funnel that? Because, because the power of God is like prosperity. It's like ideas. It's like money. It's not that there is no money, like there are no ideas, like there's no prosperity. The, the question is, if, do you have a funnel that directs that money to your house? That directs that power to your house. Come on, somebody. Do you have a system by which you can harvest what's available to you? Yes. Now, I, I want to, as I said, go back a little to the book of Romans, chapter 14 and verse 17, because this is imperative for us to understand. Are you with me so far? Yes. The book of Romans 14 and 17. For the kingdom of God is not... Eating and what? Drinking. Somebody says, well, okay. But notice this. <laughs> Amen. I like the old tradition. King James, he says it's not just. In other words, it is also this. So you may continue eating. Amen. Praise the Lord. But now notice this. But it is number one, what? Righteousness. Number two, what? Peace. And number three, what? Joy. Now notice where it is located. In the Holy Spirit. So all of the activity of the kingdom takes place in the context or in the territory called what? The Holy Spirit. Now, I'm about to say something that you need to pay attention to. This is so important that if you miss it, you will be like the average Christian that don't even know why he's defeated. And before I say that, i got to take you to John chapter 16. John chapter 16 because if I say it just imperatively, I mean, just, you know, like that, you might accuse me of establishing a doctrine on shallow ground. The gospel according to John chapter 16 and verse 7, I want you to notice this is Jesus talking. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Somebody say, this is the truth. This is the truth. Come on, talk back to me, El Shaddai. This is the truth. This is the truth. Okay, now Jesus said, this is the truth. What's the truth? That it is to your advantage that I, Jesus, go away. Yeah. Now, the average Christian today want to see Jesus. And Jesus said, that is secondary. It is actually better. It is beneficial. It is more advantageous to you if I go away. Why? Because if I don't go away, the paraclete, the helper, will not, what? Come to you. Now, this is big on so many levels, but we're going to just do the first passing. You know, sometimes we read the scripture and we go over it, and then the Bible is a layered revelation. Yes, right. William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army, used to say, the Bible doesn't just say what it, it says. Uh, and somebody say, whoa, does it lie? Uh-uh. It says much more than it is saying. That's why, notice this, a lot of people can have a scripture but end up in error because you don't just study to show yourself approved unto God, but the word has to be rightly divided. You can read the Bible, and if you don't rightly divide it, you can end up at the wrong place. Amen. Same scripture, that is right, but you end up at the wrong place. You know how many people believe the wrong thing because there are no people that can rightly divide the word of truth? 
That's what we're going to do. Now, notice what Jesus said. He wants us to recognize the advantage that is inherent, that is in the very fact of releasing him to go up to the Father. He said the advantage is the helper will come. If Jesus thought that having the Holy Spirit was more important than having him, then I wonder why the average Christian today, you listen to them. Let's praise Jesus. Jesus is Lord, and he is. But Jesus is saying, I need to step out of the way. Can I show you something deeper? When Jesus was present, read the Gospels. They record his ministry. That's why I say read the Gospels. <laughs> Nobody got convicted of sin. There is not a single time when Jesus preached and somebody said, what must I do to be saved? And got convicted of sin and just started to repent. Not a single one. Not when John preached. Noah preached for 120 years. Not a single convert. This is amazing, y'all. I need you to go with me. Even when Jesus was present, he had the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4, he came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. But guess what? Nobody got healed until he touched them or he released it. And when they touched him without permission, he got mad. He said to the woman with the issue of blood, who touched me? Okay, okay, we're going to see this. And yet, after the day of Pentecost, when Peter preached, 3,000 people said, what must we do to be saved? After the day of Pentecost, Peter would walk in the street and just his shadow would heal the sick. Yeah. Aprons and handkerchiefs would be taken from the body of the apostle Paul and the sick and the demons would leave the people, but it never happened when Jesus was here. This is big. So the dimension that the church has failed to embrace, let me put it this way. Why is it that a Christian's prayer is not different in many regards to, you know, a Buddhist or a Muslim or a Hindu or anybody else? Because it's, it's not different. Why? Why is it that there is no single person here who has ever heard a Muslim say, I love Muhammad? You, you can never hear that. Oh, they'll die for the prophet. But nobody has ever said, I love Buddha, or Buddha is in my heart. Let me go back to our faith, the Christian faith. How come these Christians, these disciples, the 500, the 5,000, the 20,000 that he fed with fish, come on somebody, and bread, how come all of those, including the ones who ate with him at the last supper when they were crucifying him, they doubted his reality and they ran. Even when he was raised from the dead, they still couldn't believe it was him even though they walked with him for three and a half years. Let me put it another way. How come a Christian can go for 10 years loving the Lord and then hit a tough spot and all their faith just disappears like that? Because Jesus, without a revelation of the Holy Spirit, is not on the inside of you. That's why... Uh, a Buddhist can say, Buddha is in my heart. I love Muhammad. The only reason having, Peter put it this way, we love the Lord whom having not seen, yet we rejoice with joy and speakable and full of glory. How can you love someone so much that you're prepared to die for him? Because the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus to you and put him on the inside of you so much so that he is closer than anything is. I love my wife with all my life, but I can't love her like I love the Lord because she's outside of me, but Jesus is on the inside of me. <laughs> you listen. He got on the inside of me by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Oh. 
So if we are to have a profound experience with God, we can't just have an intellectual exercise where you come to church so I can preach to your head. We got to deal with this area where the kingdom of God is located in the Holy Ghost. Because without the Holy Spirit, Jesus is an academic exercise. Jesus is your philosophical persuasion. Jesus is some idea of morality that you embrace or a code of conduct that helps you live an acceptable life, whatever social circle you belong into. But, but here is the truth. If you are to know the reality of God, you will never know him outside of the Holy Spirit. Today, many Christians... You know why we repent over the same thing and continue to do it and the desire is still there and you're still fighting? Because they even repent in the flesh. There is no way you can repent and ask God to help you with something when you are in the spirit and it stays in your flesh. Because the presence of God cancels your presence. The reason we have, let me put it this way. One time I was challenged and now here I am, oh God, what am I going to do? And the Lord said, the reason is you are entertaining symptoms of an empty spirit and you are trying to help yourself with natural means. Let me put it, let me give you another way. The Bible says we have not been given a spirit of what? Fear. Fear. Notice, fear is a spirit. The average person is trying to get rid of fear by being educated. You don't get rid of a spirit by education. Fear has got to be irrational because it's a spirit. Right. It don't make sense. Right. When you think about it, you have no business being afraid. Right. But you're still afraid. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Why? Because it's bigger than your intellect. Yeah. It's bigger than your logic. It's bigger than the facts that you're looking at. It is a spiritually motivated thing, and you can only win a spiritual battle in the realm of the spirit. Yeah. And today the church is trying to train people's heads yeah. with a speech. We were not called to explain God. He's too big for any of us to explain. I got news for you. The day you think you have figured him out, that's the day you will see. You know why eternity will be exciting? Every single day. You know, let me put it another way so you see, um, you think I'm not. Do you know why the elders, the 24 elders have thrones, but they can't sit on them? Every time they get up, they fall down again. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Some of you still got holy. You know why they do that? You know why they do that? Because every time they get up, they see another aspect of his glory. Some, you know, some people think eternity is going to be so boring. It won't be boring because every time he turns, you will see another side of his grace. You will see his beauty. You will see his majesty. You will see his kindness. You will see his grace. You will see his kindness towards you. You will see his glory. And you will fall out again and say, holy, holy is the Lord. But you can only see that when you are in the spirit. And so Jesus said, put that back up, it is absolutely beneficial for me. I dare you to talk to anybody, of, anybody who's genuine, who has never had the life of, of, of the Spirit, you tell me they don't have any victory. I've been pastoring for almost 20 years. I know I look young. I've been preaching for 30 years. I have been around church, Christians, the reason much of the world don't believe the snake oil that we sell is because we don't have it. Come on. Come on. I say, oh, stop. I'm going to preach on. They don't believe you. You're like, the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> Somebody thinking, well, tell your face that. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. Then you go out there to evangelize. Come on, somebody. You go out there to evangelize and say, get born again and be like us. They're like, I was out there having a party. Why should I get born again and be depressed? Right. Yeah. Always in trouble, never having the will of God, never operating in the wisdom of God. Never. Come on, somebody. Can we just tell the truth about our condition? But you know why all these things are elusive? Because we are trying to serve God in the flesh. And when you hear somebody like me start teaching you, you start thinking, it's too deep. I need to go somewhere else. Yeah. Now, you, let me tell you. You can, <clears throat> that, that's like a guy trying to be married but trying to stay single. Yeah. 
You can't say I do and then try to live single. That's an insane thought. It's getting quiet. Some of you have just solved your marriage issue. You just, okay, amen. You know, praise God. She expects me to bring the bacon home. That's your privilege. Maybe if you bring the bacon home, God will raise her up to own the pig. But when it's your turn to participate and do your part, you complain. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Here is what I'm trying to say to you. It's a lie that Christianity don't cost you anything. Yeah. If your Christianity, your walk with God, hasn't cost you everything, you are not yet one of those that God can count on. Oh, you're saved, but you're not one of those that God can count on to execute his purpose. And believe me, you don't become weird. You can just see my life. We enjoy ourselves. I'm not weird, but I'm trying to tell you, you have to understand this life in the spirit. So Jesus said, if I don't go away, I, I can't send him. The father won't send him. Look at verse 7, verse 8. Uh, let me leave that alone because I, I might go somewhere else. So, so, so the Holy Spirit, you know there's too much in the scripture. It's just... It, 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 it's, no, no, go back to verse 7. <laughs> Jesus said, you don't want me around. So we can even bring you to a point where you see miracles every week, but if you don't personally develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you will still doubt him. Yes. You will still doubt him. I mean, you can speak in tongues, even our confessions. Much of what we do in the church is in the flesh. Oh, Rabba, you still in the flesh. You haven't even got in the house. You're screaming from outside. The angels don't even hear you. Now, how many of you can admit your prayer? Is done? Man, I'm too much. Bible says your prayer will make tremendous power available. You speak to the devil. The devil says, what, what you say, boy? Uh, you know why? Because you, he said that if you had been in my counsel. So back to Luke chapter 5 and verse 17. Look at this. This is amazing. The power of God was present, but the power of God comes with the person. <laughs> I got a question for you tonight. This is the most serious question you will ever entertain as a born-again believer. How's your relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit? How much fellowship do you and, and, and him have? How's the flow? Can you sense and discern his presence when he's coming on you, when he's speaking? Now, we can do one of two things. We can be theoretical and listen to, like it is in the world, where most inspectors, industry inspectors, they've never built the businesses they inspect. They are from the textbook trying to inspect practitioners. Come on, somebody. That's the frustration of those people that do being inspected by those that have never done. Come on, somebody. So you can be one of two Christians, the one with a good speech, or you can listen to me. I'm trying to tell you, I, I grapple with these things every day. Put Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 2. Because here is what we got to look at and com confront. Habakkuk, if we were in England, Habakkuk. Yeah. Chapter 3 and verse 2. Oh, Lord, we have heard your speech and we were afraid. Oh, Lord, revive your works in the midst of our years and in the midst of the years, make them known. In other words, we don't just want to hear about what our fathers told us. When are we going to see what we read in the Bible? If Jesus Christ is still the same, how come he's not doing the same thing? How come now we got to make excuses? Well, the healing is a process. No, when he laid hands on them and he drove the enemy out, I'm still working on the anointing without measure. So when we tell the spirit to depart, somebody's made whole right there. Amen. But, but, but aren't you bothered about all the stuff that we read in the Bible and yet we settle for a speech? 
I said uh, at atmosphere for the supernatural. <laughs> a lot of Christians are like the people that work in, you know, high-end stores, they, you know, maybe socks or, you know, they sell maybe a Lamborghini. They act like they own a Lamborghini. The fact that you sell a Lamborghini doesn't mean you are as rich as the people that buy Lamborghini. Because here is how deluded we get. When the person comes in, you are the sales guy. You even start looking at them, can they afford this? Should I talk to them? And you are just as broke, if not more broke than they are. <laughs> you leave me alone. Christians say, I don't believe in miracles. We don't need all of that. We got to help with the doctors. But you don't even have insurance until Obamacare came. <laughs> I'm going to leave you alone. And on top of that, you got basic coverage. After they treat you for two weeks, they send you. Come on, somebody. When you should be believing God. You act like your mansion is going to come out of your paycheck. Your paycheck don't even cover your bills. Your paycheck just sinks into the overdraft. And we're trying to tell you, you are the seed of Abraham. You have an anointing to prosper for wealth and riches to be in your house. But okay, come on somebody. And somebody say, I don't need that because I am. No, 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 no. See, now you are confused about this. Do you really think that you will live long because you got good genes? <laughs> Not Levi's, it, you, you know. Because <laughs> some of you started checking, what? What brand ever? No, no. <laughs> your, <laughs> your health is not come out of your genes. That's right, that's right. Do you really think your family going to turn out well because you are good people? No. Do you really think everybody whose life is messed up is because they're stupid? See, you got to think about this. That's like saying, well, if these people just worked as hard as we are, and they were just, you're a little confused because there are some things that you didn't have the choice. You were privileged to get. Come on, somebody. It's getting quiet. So when we talk about the power of God, the average kids are, I don't take all of that. Oh, no, 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 no. Right now, it don't take all of that. But believe me, one day, it will take all of that and then some. So you can't build an ark when it starts to rain. Yes. You got to start this sometimes 120 years before. Yes. This is like good parents. If you're not going to fight with your kids in order to leave home, you got to start telling them, baby, 20 minutes we will be leaving. Yes. If you just say, get up, we're leaving, you just started a fight and you'll be the parent. Yes. Oh, some of you didn't know that. <laughs> you got to tell them, nah, uh, in 20 minutes, baby, put the toys away. You got five more minutes to get dressed. Hello, somebody. But, but if you just get up, we're leaving. And then you wonder why I just got unruly children. No, you have got a system that doesn't work. You, it can't start raining, and then you start picking up your sticks. Oh, where's my wood? Where's my chisel? Where's my hammer? I need to build a boat. No, no, it don't work like that. At this point, you should have built something to save your house. Notice the ark did not save Noah. Noah saved his house, but he built the ark before it started raining. And if you haven't lived long enough, everybody's got a rainy day coming. And on top of that, how are you going to be used by the Lord to deliver other people when you are just as under the circumstances as they are? So the power of God was present to him. Now, I want to just walk through this, and then I'm going to introduce them, and then we will leave. We will park for tonight. Go to uh, the book of Mark, chapter 5, because I think it paints the, the best picture. Mark 5, 25, this is the woman with the issue of blood. This is an amazing story. One of the most profound things to show you how powerful you are and how close but not getting it you can be. <laughs> Dear Jesus. Now there was a certain woman who had a flood, uh, a flaw, oh, not a flood. <laughs> yeah. Brothers, pray for me because I... I probably just put my foot in my mouth. Help get it out. Okay. I'm sorry. A flaw. <laughs> For 12 years. Amen. Your day will come when you're speaking in public. You can laugh right now, but your day is coming, Goose. Okay, now look at this. So she had a flow of blood. For 12 years. And I'm, I'm not going to preach the metaphors because I want to just read the story. 12 years. And so, next verse, let's move quickly. Uh, and she suffered many things from many physicians. She tried all the doctors. Yeah. 
But I, I noticed this. Not only did she go from doctor to doctor, she spent everything that she had because money takes, it, 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 your sickness, the sickness takes all your resources. But she was no better, but rather grew worse. Verse 27, she's growing worse, but she's expending herself. But when she heard of what? Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and she touched his garment. Now, now notice why she touched his garment. For she said, look at how powerful you are. Let me put it this way. If you're struggling or you've been in trouble, you messed up or whatever. When you decide to get up, there is nothing in heaven or in hell that can stop you. You, you're busy complaining about, my cousin said, that's what you get for talking to them. You don't have what they say. You have what you say when you decide to get, the day you decide to get rich and healed and anointed and used by God, I'm going to tell you, all of heaven will stand at attention. Okay, okay, okay let, let, me, let me slow down because I don't want to get too excited. But, but, but here is the deal. She said, she said, she said, she said to herself, I wonder what you've been saying to yourself. Because what they're saying about you don't matter. I talk good to Ramson Mum. I tell him, before you're done, you will take nations. Hallelujah. You are anointed with fresh oil. In case anybody don't know, just tell him, I said I am God's favorite child. I am the pastor whom Jesus loves. He feels a little extra special sum for me. Come on. You're going to just let me take all this stuff by myself. She said within herself, if I touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. She didn't say, I might. You know, like, you, you, you can see faith. You, you're praying for people. Let's try again. Let's see whether you got it. No, it's not whether I got it. It's whether or not you got the faith to get it. You mean we put on all this meeting to come when we didn't have anything? This is amazing. It's whether or not you can tap the anointing. We're going to see this, but look at this. She said, I shall be made whole. And immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. And this is the part I like. She felt in herself. Can you imagine when people come to church and for themselves they can feel? God touched me today. I, I don't know what happened to all y'all, but I, 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 <laughs> the Lord touched me today. He removed that pain from my heart. He removed that hurt. He removed the bitterness. He removed the loneliness. He touched my heart today. I was in his presence and he lifted me up. Can, can, can you imagine when people begin to press into the presence of God? We won't have to make so many speeches. I got to start a new series on uh, how, uh, how to not be stressed. No, come into his presence. He'll take the stress out of you. Oh, isn't that amazing? She knew that she was what? Healed uh, of our affliction. And, and notice the next verse. Now, now, now begins the interesting part. And immediately, th this is for those of you, this is another class now for those who are ministry. Uh, <laughs> immediately, Jesus knowing within himself. If you don't even know that there is an anointing on you, you have no business standing up. <laughs> You, you know, just because they say, let's pray for everybody who's got problems, it don't make babies of a difference. You, you have empty hands laying hands on empty heads. The, uh, the, the result is empty hands, empty heads, nothing. So you went for, they prayed for you. They, don't even, they didn't even believe God for anything. Oh, Father God, I pray for you. Oh, Father God, what did you? That's why you went back with the... But, you know, we are again in the flesh. I feel better because, you know, being touched by somebody always helps. Yeah. It's true. Human touch is an important thing. But that's not where the power is. So you just maybe got impressed. Ah, I'll choose the good-looking one. That's the one who will pray for me. Man. <laughs> I'll leave you alone because church, church people be coming up with... <laughs> be coming up. So it wasn't even the Holy Ghost. It was your flesh that was fed. But if you're anointed, you hear me say, you, you heard me say sometimes on Saturday, I would say, I said to a couple of people, let go of my hands and get a hold of his hands. Because right now you are getting things from me and I'm not the healer. Begin to touch the Lord. Don't touch me, touch the Lord. 
Because those of us that understand the anointing, and, and even Travis now, he, he would look at me and say, I can see it. When, when, when that thing hit, you know, people work closely, and I'm praying for somebody we're laying hands on people, they can literally see when the download is complete. There are no mysteries of the anointing. You can literally, boop, it's done. Just like on your computer, it registers 100. And then some people will pray for, and you can sense the anointing just bouncing. Or they're trying to act like, you know, they're the one who are praying. No, no. If you could have prayed at home, you should have done that right now. Okay, I'm going to leave you alone. I, I like your tenacity, but this is the wrong move right now. Right now, you don't need to be, ah, Shanda, Robo, oh, oh. You could have done that at your house. <laughs> I apologize. I'm just trying to mess with you. But you know where I'm going, don't you? Receive. It's more blessed to receive. You know, I found out one of the most amazing things I can say to God is, I don't know. You know what set me free? I don't have to look impressive. Right. Or try to be impressive. Or prove a point to anybody. You know why a lot of people are in bondage and they can never be themselves? Because they don't know they are enough. I was talking to one guy today, you know, dealing with television across a particular continent. And he was trying to act deep, you know. I told him, do you know that I'm not that guy? He was, he was talking foolishly. And I was trying to be nice, but really, really. <laughs> I said, you know, I am not that guy who is trying to be acceptable to you. I'm already enough. Amen. He, he, he said, what? I said, I said uh, you are confused about who you are. You don't give me worth. Just because you look at me or you look at what I do and say, oh, it ain't all that. It doesn't make it so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the average, oh, they said I didn't look the part. That's what they said. Yeah. That's right. But it doesn't make it so. Right. You don't need to know how to be free. Yeah. But, but, but imagine Jesus knowing that power, virtue had flown out of him. I got a question for you. Do you know what you pack? Because Jesus... Some of you got a 38, a 45. Come on, somebody. Uh-huh. But Jesus packed something else, and he could tell when power was out of him. When's the last time you sense virtue go out of you? You are so in tune with, you see, the church should have known this, ministering all this, but we would rather, you know, talk intelligently. Don't you know that the devil is the god of this world? And thank God for intelligence. That's why we are educated. But did you know that one of the indices, one of the indicators that these are the last days is that people will pride knowledge and human wisdom over the Spirit of God and over the things of God. Wow. So if the doctor says it is actually so important because the surgeon spoke. What the surgeon spoke doesn't mean babies. If I come under the anointing and I say something different, what I said is more important than his educated right. said. Yeah. Oh, you're listening to me. Now, I got to make sure I speak under the anointing, not out of arrogance now, because somebody might die if I contradict the doctor. Because there's, there's a preacher who's just trying to contradict the doctor. Ah, the doctor didn't mean, no, no, no. Are you speaking under the anointing or you shut your mouth? Yeah. Somebody, your words are consequences now. But notice this. Power had gone out of him. And he turned around in the press, in the crowd, and he said, who touched me? Now, the, this thing gets interesting. Look at the next verse. His disciples said, can't you see all these people thronging you? Do you know what to throng mean? They are all pushing up against you, squeezing you. This is the language of contact, close proximity. They are thronging you, and you got the nerve to say, who touched me? Obviously, thronging him, bumping against him, and pressing him, as far as Jesus is concerned, that is not touching him. Oh, my God. Just because you show up and say, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Or oh, you're quiet. You know, because we all got different expressions. Oh, touch me. 
because we, we got the way different ways. Some people, ah, Jesus. The angels are like, oh, oh. Some, some people can't even be heard. They're like, <laughs> Jesus, I am upset. Okay, okay. This, whichever one is one of your experience or something in the middle. <laughs> I got news for you. <laughs> you might not have touched the Lord. <laughs> Here's a question for you. I, I, this is big. When's the last time you prayed or you were in his presence and you touched him and you knew I touched the Lord? These are spiritual questions. This, this is not religious biscuit, you know. This is not for you who's looking to feel good. This is, this is we're going into the inner sanctuary. When, when's the last time you touched the Lord? Hmm? Because thronging him, bumping against him, being in the meeting, that's where they were. Hearing him preach, it wasn't touching him at all. He said, who touched me? And then look at verse 32. This woman, fearing, she, he looked around to see her. He, 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 you can see. Sometimes, can I be honest with you? If I haven't got much time, some people I don't want to pray for. Because I ain't got time to be pulling you in the arena of faith. God goes to where people are hungry. Amen. You know why God blessed Jacob? Because God loves people that will pull on him. Yes. He's not coming. And, and we all go through a journey. I went, like all of you, I went through a journey where sometimes we're trying to be cool in God's presence. <laughs> you, 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 you know, brothers, there might be a girl who needs to know that I'm smooth. <laughs> You're not going to receive the anointing. Some of you twist yourself in God's presence because <laughs> a brother might be looking. Wow. You're missing out on the... Come on, somebody. Some of you just flat out don't believe in the power of God. Well, bless God, I'm not going to fall down and give that man the pleasure that the power of God came on me. I'm going to stand my ground. I'm in Florida. No, this is not Florida. This is your... <laughs> it's not about falling. Whether or not you fall, touch the Lord. But we come up with all kinds of tricks. Oh, bless God, there is no way. You know, like God healed so many people on, uh, over the weekend, and uh, more people actually didn't testify. Because yeah. it's true. Because you came up afterwards saying, oh, I also had a testimony. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can, while I'm at that, can I also tell you something else? <laughs> can I also tell you something else? When we are praying for people under the anointing, that's the best time for you to come. Not after. Yeah. There are levels of anointing. The anointing is for work. When the water is stirred up, that's when you jump in. You don't wait till you may not embarrass yourself or nobody is looking. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Ah, but, but knowing, he said, he said, who touched me? And he started looking for her. Look at, look at why he was looking for her. This is a touch of faith. This scripture came alive in me several months ago. Jesus said, when the Son of Man returned, and he's not just talking at the last day. He said, will he find faith? When the Lord shows up at your situation, will he find faith? So the woman knowing, fearing and trembling. You know why he feared and trembled? Because she did not get it the way it was prescribed. She stole the anointing. And Jesus was mad. That's why she's fearing and trembling. He didn't say, Oh, if anyone touched me, come around. If he said it like that, she'd say, it's me, I touch you. <laughs> he was furious. Yeah. Why? The Holy Ghost hadn't been pulled out, poured out. So he was packing that power for the multitude, and she just ate the whole lunch. <laughs> like, like, Mama, you baked all these nice little things, and little Johnny in the night, he tiptoed over there. <laughs> come on, lad. You wake up, where's the breakfast? That's what happened. <laughs> and she said, what are we going to feed the multitude? Oh, I pray that one day you develop that kind of faith that just makes God, even if he didn't want to do this, at that time, your faith will grab the miracle and you'll receive it regardless. Come on, somebody. I I'm almost done. I'm almost done, but I need you to see this. Now, now look at this. She trembling, knowing what had happened in her. When the power of God is real, you will know what happened in you, not what they said to you. I can see you're healed. No, 
are you healed? That's why a lot of Christians today, they say, oh, let's have a healing and miracle service and pray for the sick. But nobody tests them. We prayed for the sick, but what was wrong with you? Is it still there? Hello, somebody. Because we could fake this. Unless we say, ah, I couldn't hear. Well, let's test your ear. Because she knew what had happened. And she came and fell down and told the whole truth. What was the whole truth? I withdrew the power from you. I stole it. Mm, Because we're going to get this. I understood the law of contact and transmission. Okay, okay, this is big. (laughs) Look at this. So he said to her, Donna, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now, 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 let me draw this quickly and then I'll show you this. Notice this. Jesus is there. Everybody pushing against him. So close. They said they're thronging him. It was like, you know, your nightclub situation. Everybody was close. (laughs) 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 Come on, somebody. (laughs) But but they didn't get anything. Didn't get anything. How can you be so close to the Lord and didn't get anything? How? And how long are you going to be that close to the Lord and not know how to get anything? Do you really have time to go next and near the Lord with all the challenges and issues you have to deal with and still come up with zero? Do you really have time for that? Because I don't know about you. I'm getting too old to just be bumping against God. I need answers now. So I'm going to show you through the scriptures what the eight points of access to the anointing are. Number one, let's write them down. Here are the eight points of access. I'm just going to delineate them, list them, and then we go. Number one, the first point of access to faith, uh, to, to the anointing is your faith. Faith. Not just passive faith. Faith that's released, and we'll talk about that. Number two. Access, point of access to the anointing is the laying on of hands, the law of contact and transmission. Even our redemption is metaphorically symbolized by the scapegoat and the laying on of hands and the carrying away. We'll deal with all of that. Number three, this is big, especially as we preach the gospel of grace. We need to untwist this part. Number three, access to the anointing is obedience. God still requires you to obey him. It's not just the obedience of Jesus. He wants you to obey him. He's not just your savior. He's your Lord. Jesus said, how come you call me Lord, Lord, and then don't do what I say? You invalidate your confession. Number four, point of access to the anointing. Is praise and worship. The quickest, in fact, is praise and worship because a song is a door. (laughs) The realm of the spirit begins with the song. This is big. Number five, point of access to the anointing, precious seed. Learning to give something that means something to you. When your giving moves you, it triggers the anointing. There's a strong correlation between that. Number six, point of access to the anointing, prayer. And in prayer, I'm talking about how much time you spend waiting on the Lord in prayer. The transition between the flesh and the spirit is waiting on the Lord in prayer. That's why this generation can't touch the power of God because we're in a hurry. We're the kind of people that want to go to church for an hour and we're out. You will never see the power of God. Because not only do you do that at church, that's what you do at home. You've scheduled God into your life. Not letting him be your life. Now, I'm not talking about the other extreme where the Holy Ghost moves and the meeting is six hours all the time. That's foolishness. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about do you have time for God? 
because you do have time to watch three hours of football. You wait on the doctor and you feel privileged that the consultant made you wait for an hour, but they are the best, so they saw you and you are excited. This is big. Number seven, point of access, is the blood. You need to know how to appropriate the blood. That's why the enemy has been working over time to present to us a bloodless religion. A church that knows nothing about the blood of Jesus. The anointing always goes where the blood has been first. That's why we need to understand about the blood. Number eight, and lastly, the ministry gift or the man or woman of God. Did you know that whoever God places over your life is an access to the anointing? The anointing will flow from the head. You get to the place where if you don't understand how spiritual transactions work, all of a sudden you got things in you that you never even knew, good or bad, because of who you are connected to. You used to be sweet, now you're mean and judgmental. Come on, somebody. You used to be mean, now you're even finding sweet in you. (laughs) Glory to God. Eight points of access. Faith, the laying on of hands, obedience, praise and worship, precious seed, prayer and waiting on the Lord, the blood and the ministry gift. We're going to deal with these things. Ladies and gentlemen, it'll be like a faucet. I have come to the place where I can turn on the anointing any time I want to. Because it is like a carpenter or a mechanic with his equipment. I can just pull out my wrench anytime I want. This is amazing. Yeah. And he, oh my God, are you going to use me? No, he's going to use me because he sent me. Yeah. Oh. But you know, that's not just for ministry gifts, fivefold ministry gifts, pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, and prophets. It is for every believer. Amen. Now, two minutes. I am going to demonstrate to you what it feels to touch the Lord. Amen. Anybody interested? Yes. You got the word on it now. It's only two minutes. That's what it's going to take. Okay. Stand to your feet. Quick. Come on. Thank you, guys. Two minutes. Two minutes. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands. Or if you're still getting ready, I'll give you a moment. This is so good. And you're going to be doing this at your house so many times, you won't need to wait at church. And I promise you what I know. (laughs) Your answers will be so clear that even your enemies will be impressed. (laughs) Even the people who are trying to corner you will be like, wow, how did you get out of this? (laughs) Because when you're in his presence, lift your hands up. Even sickness would be like, wow, they were driven, we were driven out in style. (laughs) (laughs) Glory to God. Lift those hands up. Just sing it one round and then I'll, I'll give you an instruction. Come on up there. time, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen to me, listen to me. At this point, While your hands are lifted, eyes closed, come on, lift your hands. This is important. Surrender. Give yourself up to the Lord. In other words, all of you just say, Jesus, you can have all of me now. And mean it. Imagine when you were a kid, and you're playing, 
and you just surrendered and fell on the trampoline or whatever it was. Just let yourself go in his arms. Can you see? It changes. Now begin to love him. Don't think about yourself. Begin to tell him how awesome, how precious, how lovely he is. Feel that anointing right here. Love you, Jesus. You are everything for me. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Redeemer. Precious are your thoughts towards me. What a Savior. What a healer. What a champion. Glory, glory, glory. See, in this realm, noise is not a sign of power. Actually, silence is the most powerful thing in this realm. Surrender. Oh, yours, Jesus. Sapala Mahai. Come on, touch him. I can sense his presence. The glory is here. Telema sokomaha tamaliko. Prefere kelema. Oh, come on. Breathe in the anointing. Just take it in. Just like you breathe. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. You are holy. Oh. Let Gabby just sing and you just touch the Lord. You know, some of you don't even understand if you do know anything about Jewish tradition. If you see a Jewish man praying, they would literally begin to rock and shake. The power of God comes on your body. And sometimes you feel lightheaded. That's why we fall out or do whatever happens to you. But right now, your body feels so light because it's coming on you. It's not a formula. It's just the way it is. His presence cancels your presence. <laughs> sometimes I'd be in my room and I can't stop shaking. It's the power of God. And... And I'm not embarrassed. And some of you may even fall to your seat or you feel like whatever. Just the key is stay surrendered. Don't be conscious of yourself. Now ask him to touch. You touch the Lord. Now ask him to touch. The Lord touch me again. And notice the difference. Salima palali kiosuma. Era luba rola mamba re se kenama. Roko randa suna haya. Profere kele mahaya. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, Samaro, 
Now begin to pray in your, in your heavenly language. Open your mouth and pray. And sense the difference now when you pray. You are connected to the Lord. You are not worshiping from afar. He's right there. Rakamando rosaneha. Lepla palama palama malola mambare. Prenele kele la baha. Sentelia lo moroko. Ramando soto. Oh, glory. The glory is in this house. It's already an atmosphere for miracles and so supernatural. Rakando si talamani, si palamabale. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I guess the only way to ask it is, how many of you feel connected to the Lord? I mean, let me see your hand. How many of you feel like you are in his presence? You're not making this up. Just like you know your companion is around, your family, your girlfriend, your man, your children, they are there. You can now sense the Lord is here. How many of you can? There. Now ask him what you want. And, and, and then you go home and document how quickly this prayer gets answered. Because you're not afar. You're right next to him. Ask him what you want. You are in the holy of holies. Pasokoma. Fronele mamarole paloma. Franikala maha. Zombre nisa dele barola ma. Touch your people, Lord. The glory fill this house and burdens are being removed and yokes are being destroyed because of that anointing. We give you glory. We give you glory. Now go ahead and give him praise. Give him praise. No, don't clap. Don't clap. Give him praise. Give him the fruit of your lips. Give him praise. 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 Oh, come let us adore. Oh, come let us adore. Oh, come. Sing it.
relaxing. Now you know when you go home. And if you get stuck, put a CD on. The song will open a door. But when you, op when you get through the door, surrender. When you surrender, begin to adore him. He's a person. He inhabits your praise. And when you sense you are touching the Lord, that's when the fellowship begins. Oh, there's glory in this house. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. That's when you will recover your song. Your song won't be coming from the singers and the piano and the organ and the drums. You'll be like David out of my depth. Your song, your heart will be indicting a good theme as you, re you recite your words unto the Lord. That's how, for those of you that want to be innovative and inventors according to God's word, that's how you capture ideas. This is the moment where he gives you answers. What, what you begin to think in this moment, don't dismiss it. I always have a notepad because he's about to drop some things. Time, time for downloads. That's why other people are busy copying other people. I don't copy anybody. I just sit there, I surrender to the Lord, and I can write a whole range of things. I'm telling you now. You are more brilliant than you thought, but you will discover yourself in his presence. We're going to park for tonight, but they'll continue to play just like that. That's perfect. That's a heavenly sound. And, and I don't want you to feel under pressure to leave because the Lord is touching some of you. But if you do have to leave, here is the most important thing. If you are not born again, there's going to be pain. And his lovely wife and Chris, you know, will join him over here, Lady Jewel. A whole bunch of amazing people. If you do need us to introduce you to Jesus Christ, please give us the privilege. We, we don't see ourselves as better than anybody. Somebody helped us and we just want to extend the same, the same gesture of goodwill to you. Thank God for those who carried us when we couldn't walk by ourselves. But whatever you do, this is the best way to start the day. And you see how it didn't take much? The more you practice the presence of God, you will enter in just like that. Change your whole life. The stress just leaves. You don't even have the answer at the time, but there will be an assurance underneath that all is well. And then when the answer comes, you just knew I already had it anyway. I, I trust God. Bless the Lord. Love you so much. Lift that right hand up. Say it like you mean it. I am too blessed, am too blessed. To, be to be cursed. I walk, I walk. in the favor of God favor. and in the comfort the of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, Therefore I, will I will let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and to you. O oh Lord my God, you are my strength. You are my song and you have become my salvation in Jesus name amen and amen God bless you and uh, enjoy the practice of his presence it is exactly the same thing we love you amen amen thank you for watching get understanding with Ramson and Australia Mumba this broadcast has been made possible by friends partners and viewers like you in this area we trust that you've been blessed and thank you in advance for your continued prayers and generous financial support. For information about our ministries or to download our free podcasts, visit us at www.elshaddaitoday.com.